tonight. Niue Honorary Consulate opens in Tokyo. WHO Regional Director visits Niue. And whales spotted on the rock. Good evening and welcome to our BCN News Bulletin. I'm Mersa Takala. A special ofakalo for atu to our viewers from across the region, thanks to our partners at Pacifica TV. Leading our bulletin tonight, the office of the Honorary Council of Niue in Japan was officially opened over the weekend at the headquarters of the Japan Niue Friendship Association in the Obodai building in Tokyo. This volunteer group is dedicated to fostering cultural exchanges and friendships between Japan and Niue. The Niue government has also appointed Sean Jason Avemoa as the Honorary Consul of Niue to Japan in Tokyo, effective from July 10, 2024, for a two-year term. Premier Dalton Tangilangi stated that, the, that this marks a historic moment and is a testament to the collaborative efforts and unwavering dedications of many remarkable individuals. The first Pacific Islander to be appointed the Regional Director of the World Health Organization's Western Pacific Office, Tongan Dr. Saya Mao Piukala and his delegation visited Niue over the weekend. He sat down with our senior reporter Esther Pavihi, reflecting on the responsibility of his new role and global healthcare workforce challenges and some ways WHO can help a small member country like Niue. Dr. Saya Piukala and his delegation, including Sir Dr. Colin Tukuitonga, arrived on Friday on a three day visit to the island. Being the first Pacific Islander to take up the role of the World Health Organization's Western Pacific Regional Director Post, Tongan Dr. Saia Mo Pukala says the pressure is on him as he hopes to pave the way for more Pacific Island doctors to take up this post in years to come. The first Pacific Islander to be on the role. And the pressure is on me. Um, even though it's a moment of pride for the Pacific, but the enormity is not lost on me. I don't. Uh, I, I don't think that the people realize uh, how stressful this life for me, and the pressure is on me. I don't want to be the face. Pacific Islander in the last. Dr. Pukala explains some of the work of the World Health Organization, in particular his office, the Western Pacific Office, which includes Niue. The Western Pacific region is one of the most diverse regions in the world in terms of uh, land masses, in terms of population, in terms of uh, economies. You know, from 1.4 billion population of China to around 1,500 uh, in Niue. But it doesn't mean that Niue doesn't, is uh, not important. There's a saying in Tonga, Sikaiha, small but significant. There are people in Niue that they need the help and assistance of WHO. And I think um, we, I cannot ignore Niue, Tokelau, Cook Islands, you know. I think it's important that uh, <clears throat> during my visit is to make sure the strong collaboration between the government, the people, the community and WHO is critical to deliver health care for the people of Niue. On the topic of the global healthcare workforce shortages, Dr. Pukala said that this is a challenge facing many countries and impacting also the Pacific Island Health Departments as they lose their healthcare workers to Australia and New Zealand. He said that during this visit, there were discussions on some ways that the World Health Organization can help small health departments like Niue. WSO can assist in developing healthcare workforce plan for member states. Uh, plus, we do uh, support uh, fellowship training, eh? train healthcare work, workforce, nurses, doctors, upskilling. Um, one of the systems that WHO provided uh, for many years is the pollen. It's an online training uh, for member states. 
uh, it stopped two or three years ago because the system uh, was outdated. So they're upgrading the system and hopefully uh, next year they will be able to uh, restart that uh, program to help upskilling our, our healthcare workforce. He also reflected on the growing Tongan community here, which over the years has increased, including the nurses and doctors who have joined the health department, including their recently appointed chief medical officer, Dr. Salisi Akawola. The last time I was here was 2007. And I, one of the outsiders who came and worked in this hospital, uh, after it was opened in uh, 2006. So, uh, just a sort of reflection, you know, the infrastructure development has uh, improved. The road has, is much, much better than many years ago. The development here in the hospital, the aged care, the COVID-19 hospital, now that we've just commissioned the oxygen plant. And I remember back in the days when um, uh, I used to work here, we have to prioritize who to use the oxygen because oxygen was brought from New Zealand. So when if the boat is delayed, then we were a bit nervous, you know, if we run out of uh, oxygen. So my thought reflection, and I, you know, humble to meet the Tongan community, they have increased in size, and providing support to the health care system. We've got a few uh, nurses and a doctor here working now, which uh, I think uh, is a loss for Tonga, but it's a cane from Niue. Dr. Pikala is not a stranger to Niue. He did work here before as a locum after Cyclone Hatta when the temporary hospital was set up at the youth centre and on several occasions since then. He said coming to Niue on this trip was like returning home. He is thankful for the warm hospitality shown to him and his delegation while on the island over the past few days. Esther Pavihi for BCN News. The Niue government is proud to announce that Niue has been honoured with two prestigious awards from the International Longevity Centre in the United Kingdom for its contribution to healthy ageing. The Bronze Medal Award for Race Walking under the Physical Activity and Life Expectancy category highlights Niue's level of physical activity amongst its adult population. The Premier of Niue, Honourable Dalton Tangilangi, expressed immense pride in this achievement, stating he wanted to extend his gratitude to the Department of Health, especially the Public Health Division and the people of Niue for the tremendous efforts. The government of Niue extends its appreciation to Dr. Dean Rex, a special envoy for global engagement, for accepting the award on behalf of the government. A handing over ceremony of a newly commissioned oxygen plant was held at the Niue 40 Hospital on Monday by the World Health Organization. WHO Regional Director for the Western Pacific, Dr. Pew Kala, says the plant will boost the production of essential medicine in the treatment of respiratory diseases. WHO Regional Director for the Western Pacific, Dr. Pew Kala, expressed his gratitude shown by the people of Niue for him and his team during his tour of the Niue 40 Hospital this week. We are very happy to be here in Niue to commission this plant, which enables Niue to produce the essential medicine that is necessary for the treatment of respiratory diseases like COVID-19 and pneumonia. With this ability, you have now strengthened one more area of your pandemic preparedness. As well as, as well given newest remoteness, you are also now able to provide necessary care to those who need it. The plant was officially handed over to the Minister of Social Services, Honourable Sonia Talangi, before he took a tour of the Niue Hospital. On behalf of the government and people of Niue, thank you, Dr. Saia Fukala, the WHO and the EU, for this critical infrastructure, which will not only strengthen Niue for services, but increase our resilience against climate change, economic shocks, and potentially 
even generate revenue from other sectors on island that also use oxygen, from diving to heavy machinery maintenance, increased resilience in these areas also. My fingers are crossed. This is a true blessing for our people. Director of Health Minova Ikimau says this was a milestone to Nua's health and also acknowledged her hardworking staff. I extend a very warm welcome and acknowledgement to all of my health staff. Your efforts, teamwork and support of each other to get us to this point is nothing short of phenomenal. Additionally, we have in our midst here today friends of Dr. Saya Piukala and retired Newer Healthcare staff who have, been, who have seen the journey of Newer Health from Lord Liverpool Hospital, the temporary hospital post Heather, and where we are today, Newer Fall Hospital. We are also so pleased to have you join us to witness yet a milestone in Newer Health. Dr. Pugh Culler says the oxygen system is sufficient enough to meet the needs of Newe while operating training is to be provided. This PSA oxygen system has a production capacity sufficient to meet the needs of Newe. And the system comprises of 300 oxygen cylinders of varying sizes and accessories, a preventive maintenance kit and oxygen analyzer. Operator, tra operator training will be provided for the plant's operators. And I strongly encourage the government of Niue to, estab to establish a three-year preventative maintenance contract with the installers to support the efficient operation of the plant. The funding for the plant was provided by the European Union at a cost of 385,000 US dollars, as well as the building in which it was housed. And in our Constitution Review updates, the Constitution Review Committee will be meeting with the village of Tamakotonga this Sunday, but there are still a few villages who have yet to invite the committee to meet them, including the largest village of Alofi South. Concerns have been raised at some of the meetings over the poor public engagement in the process. Here's more with Esther Pavihi. From the meeting with the USB alumni last week, several issues were identified about the lack of public engagement. Concerns were raised about whether people will turn up to the public referendum given the poor attendance at the village meetings. This was highlighted at the meeting that if only a few people turn up to vote, then the country's constitution could very well simply change because of the lack of public interest. What the public is not aware of is that even if they don't support the changes, they will still need to turn up to the voting stations and cast their vote for it to count. The chairperson of the committee, Honourable Billy Talangi, confirmed that only the valid votes counted after the referendum will matter, whether those votes are for or against the changes. There has been no public information or awareness to inform and engage the public on the proposed changes to the constitution, except for the meetings with the villagers, which were attended mainly by those older than 40 years. Also noted by the committee is the lack of engagement by the youth in the process of this constitutional changes. The public will be given the chance to vote yes or no to the four proposed bills come 31st of August. The four bills are to change the name of the head of government from Premier to Prime Minister. The second proposed bill is to increase the number of the members of Cabinet from four to six. The third bill is to extend the term of the new Assembly from three to four years. And the fourth bill is to change the name of the Office of the Auditor General of New Zealand. The Constitution Review Committee has not met yet with the villages of Alofi South, Namukulu, Toi and Higutavake. The four proposed uh, constitutional amendment bills will be returned to the Fonakipule on the 7th of August for the third and final reading. And the public referendum is planned for Saturday the 31st of August, the same day as the village council elections. Esther Pavihi for BCN News. The 10th Pacific Islands Leaders Meeting or PAM 10 has begun in Japan. New Air Premier Honorable Dalton Tangilangi is honored to be part of the meeting and had a successful bilateral meeting with the Prime Minister of Japan, Fumio Kishida. Kishida welcomed New Air's first honorary consulate in Japan, hoping to further enhance the relationship between the two countries. Honorable Tangilangi expressed his deep gratitude to the government and people of Japan for their ongoing cooperation and looks forward to even stronger collaboration. 
Meanwhile, Premier Tangilangi showcased Niue's innovative approach to marine conservation on Monday during an ocean education session at the Sasakawa Peace Foundation for Pacific Island Nation Weeks for Ocean Day in Tokyo. The Premier also met with the president of the foundation, Dr. Atsushi Tsunami. Tangilangi highlighted a notable homegrown initiative, the Niue Ocean White Trust Now and the Unga Conservation. He emphasized on the importance of community-led projects and international partnership for a sustainable future. The Environment Department is in the process of public consultation to develop a new waste management strategy for the island. The firm of Tonkin and Taylor has been engaged to help design the new strategy. Here's more with Esther Pavihi. The director of the Department of Environment, Hayden Taolangi, told BCN News that the last waste management strategy from 2010 to 2015 was not implemented because of a lack of funding, among other challenges. But from that experience, he says, that the department has learned the lessons to ensure the new strategy will be responsive to New Air's waste management needs. We've got a new project that has come on board, and um, over the next few months we will be putting out some notices in terms of... Um, the next steps in terms of not only um, old vehicles but also scrap metal around uh, homes. Um, with this new project which is um, funded by the Global Environment Facility, it addresses old vehicles. Um, there's quite a lot of work that's still be, that is still required, especially around the machinery that's required to bail all these vehicles in place. So we want to have a structured way forward in terms of um, putting the right steps and formalizing everything with um, SPREP so that we have a consistent way forward and also we can work with the uh, village councils and also the government sectors and the private sector so that um, they understand what's happening. It's not going to happen overnight um, and that is the whole intention of linking it to the village inspections so that we have observed and we have seen and it's uh, evidence-based uh, the issues but it has been a, a long time coming. Some of the pressing concerns raised in the consultations with community stakeholders and government agencies include the status of the derelict cars littered around people's homes and some dumped in the bush. Talangi said that this is another project of the Environment Department and they will start collecting the old vehicles over the coming months. Funding opportunity has also, um, has also come up for Niue um, in terms of being more coordinated in terms of our uh, waste management and also our activities and ensuring that our activities are reflected also in the communities. I think waste management is basically everybody's responsibility and everybody um, contributes to waste and so it's only fair that everybody um, assists with this uh, waste strategy, uh, the, the different stakeholders and village councils. Hayden Talangi said that it is everyone's responsibility to manage and control waste on the island and the role of the Department of Environment is to mobilise resources and secure funding to address issues like waste. It's a collective um, uh, collection of ideas and, and concepts. It's not just environment. It's everybody's responsibility and so our role is also to try and get the resources that are required, um, especially around funding and knocking on doors for different donors. It's not just the next couple of years. This is long-term waste management will happen regardless of um, we're still in the job, but it's for our future generations and that's what we should aspire to. The Environment Department will be resuming its radio program over the coming weeks to keep the public informed of the different projects and activities such as this waste management strategy. Esther Pavi for BCN News. And staying with the WHO Regional Director, a lunch was organized by the Tongan community for Dr. Pew Kala on Sunday. Tongan Community President Sitani Vea said they wanted to show their appreciation to a fellow Tongan appointed to the WHO role. Dr. Pew Kala thanked the Tongan community for the warm hospitality shown to him and his team. When we first heard that um, I said Pew Kala become the Regional Director of the uh, World uh, Health Organization, in our heart, we was very, very happy. And uh, especially this time, he visited us here in Niue. And um, also this opportunity for us also, Tongan, here in Niue to meet him. Um, and everyone is very happy to do something to, and that's why we look at his time. is very tied up, uh, it's very tight his time here on the island, but uh, 
this only time they said is available for us to put something um, together with him. Yeah. The newly appointed World Health Organization Regional Director for the Western Pacific arrived last Friday to the island. He met with the Acting Premier of Niue, Honorable Essa Mwana Ainu, and the Minister of Social Services, Sonia Talangi. He was later hosted to a dinner by the Minister of Social Services with the Health Director and her staff at Manui's. On Saturday, he visited the Hydroponic and Vanilla Farm and later had dinner that was hosted by the Hakupu Council of Women. On Sunday, he attended a church service at the Methodist Church in Alofi, followed by lunch at the Niue Golf and Sports Club. As a lead-up to the Alofi South Show Day this Saturday at the Hala Mahanga Grounds, the village folk started a week-long calendar of activities starting with their Marine Day. People from the village and their friends and families from other villages joined in the fun fishing activities. The days was enjoyed by all, including the young ones, as they learned the skills of fishing and reef cleaning for seafood. Be sure to join us at the Alofi South Annual Village Show Day this coming Saturday at the Hala Mahanga Grounds. And on our feature segment tonight, BCN News had a chance to speak with Charlie Fuku Tongahai, otherwise known to many as Fuku, one of the only few trained and certified plumbers on the island. The owner of AC Fix Plumbing Services shared his journey when he began his career at the Public Works Department as a plumbing trainee in 1972. Fuku, as he is known by all on the rock, has a career spanning five decades as a plumber. The 68-year-old from Alofi South has lived and studied in Tonga for 11 years and in Samoa before returning to start his plumbing business. I finished my contract in Nukalofa in 2007. And then you came back to Niue. And I came back to Niue. Until now? Up until now, uh, not really. I was here for three months when I returned from Tonga. And I had a call from uh, the company that I work for. If I can do the the same job in uh, in Savoy in, in in Samoa, Western Samoa, so I did. I went there. I do my three months uh, working there. I complete my project, and I came back. And when did your plumbing business start here in New I finished from uh, from from public works in eighty ninety four. Or maybe in 93, I, I, I applied for leave to take up my uh, private work as a, as a plumber. So since then, I, I'm still going. He says there are no challenges to his work as the job is not new when he used to work for government and then going private. Fuku shares on the various services provided by his business. I install uh, uh, solar heaters, uh, do the maintenance. I do the uh, inside uh, layout for the new households, hot water and cold water. I install um, gas water heaters, those type of things. Do the train layer, uh, the, 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 the same thing. Fuku was able to share the significance of the site where our interview was conducted called Viola. He says the site is a historic one that has been there since the early 1950s as it was a site of a deep well that supplied water to the hospital back then. This is one of the historic area that most of the new, new people don't know. Vayala. Where is Vayala? Yeah. And, and where Vayala name come from? For my uh, understanding, when I worked for the government in, in 72, this area here is already in operations. But to my understanding uh, of this area, this was handed up by the prisoners. Handed by prisoners, a 62 meter depth. 62 meters is 20, 200 odd feet. That's the depth. And uh, it was under the supervision of the Palangi named uh, Jacobson. I, I don't see the guy. I don't see him. And I don't know the prisoners who, who do the, and it's a lot of work here. That's how I see it. It's a lot of work. Because um, when I went down to the bottom of this, uh, uh, deep well, they call it a deep well afterwards. It's how they, they do the digging, it's ankle. They do the steps like this, corner to corner, and then another one goes like, down like this to the corner, and another one goes like this until it hits the water. That's how it was done before. But uh, I don't see any written uh, uh, report or something like that when I work for the government concerned for this area here. He hopes more young people on the island will show a keen interest in taking up plumbing as a career. 
His EC Fix Plumbing Services operates from Mondays to Saturdays. My advice for them, uh, try and do some plumbing work, you know, because my time will, 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 uh, will come out from, from, the, from the job. And who else is going to do it? Someone has to do it. Just like every, every trade, you've got to be uh, uh, spiky because one day those uh, old guys will come out and you, you will replace them. And ending things off, the whales are back on the rock. This was filmed by a local resident, Salote Siri of Namaui in Makefu on Tuesday morning in front of her home. The whale is seen splashing around in the water, having the time of its life. The much-anticipated annual arrival of the humpback whales to Niue marks another early start to the season that runs from July to October. And that's our news bulletin for tonight. You can join us for our Pangahau Bulletin next Tuesday. Until then, good evening.